Chaos Gate Demon Hunters could be described as XCOM 2 wearing Warhammer 40k pajamas. But if that isn't enough to help you decide whether to purchase the game, this video starts with a 30 second summary of the game in a nutshell. If you're still intrigued after that, we'll dive deeper into the mechanics, what it's like to actually play the game, and we'll compare it to other games you may have played. So without further ado, hold on to your butts. Several planets have become infected, and it's your job to cruise from planet to planet, upgrading your ship and researching technologies along the way to kill the infection before it spreads beyond control. On the planet's surface, you control the Grey Knights in turn-based combat, picking up experience and injuries along the way, making soldier upgrades and injury management a key priority. Everything is turned up to 11 from explosions, blood and voice acting to form a decent story, whether you're a 40k fan or a first timer with the franchise. The game was first released in May 2022 with mostly positive reviews, so the question is, has the game done the XCOM 2 formula justice, or the Warhammer franchise for that matter? Let's dive into the mechanics and the setting to find out. The tutorial takes you through the basics in a story-based mission. It's slick and does just enough to show you the basics of fighting and ship management before leaving you to it. With that said, as your Grey Knights grow in experience, you slowly gain new weapons and abilities, which gives the game a gentle incline of a learning curve. That is, until you reach the mid-game and the game becomes far more challenging. However, be prepared to totally f**k up your first playthrough as the snowball effect overwhelms you, but you'll find the second playthrough far easier. If you're interested so far, let's dive into the mechanics and explain what you actually do in the game. In Chaos Gate Demon Hunters, you spend half your time commanding your ship, the Baleful Edict, and the other half commanding your Grey Knights on the ground. So what do you do on your ship? It's split into a few sections. The star map is pretty self-explanatory. It shows you all planets in the sector and where the infection is, so you can decide where to go next. In the barracks, you can spend quite some time upgrading your Grey Knight skills, while switching weapons and your newfound gear between them. But the most fun is to be had in the Manufactorum, where you upgrade your ship slowly over time, which is good as it starts as an absolute wreck, having only just finished a campaign. Then we have the Libris Malleus, where you research all sorts of useful things. If you enjoy upgrading things and looking at every detail, you can spend many happy hours commanding the Baleful Edict. But bear in mind the most important resource to balance is time, which is always against you. But with that said, if you want to get straight to the fighting, you can breeze through the ship management and make planet fall relatively quickly, provided you're happy not to min-max your Great Knights 100%. There's more detail to be had here too. You can place prognosticars on the star map to help slow the spread of infection, which is called the Bloom, by the way. and Spend requisition points with Grandmaster Varden Kai, played by Andy Serkis no less, who is just one of the many interesting characters you will come across in the game. There are even scripted ship-on-ship -ship battles and the potential to fend off borders, but you don't actually fly the ship. It's mostly a few clicks here and there, or working through a script to progress everything. In summary, there's a lot to do in the Baleful Edict, even if much of it is choosing between option A or option B, you can spend plenty of time tweaking the skills and equipment of your Grey Knights to ensure your squad is as deadly as possible, but ultimately it's up to you how much time you spend here. With that said, let's get to the fighting and see how that works. The second part of the game is the boots on the ground squad based tactics. Now, for those who are only interested in comparing Chaos Gate to XCOM 2, let's get this out of the way. To the casual player, they're basically the same, but there's far less RNG in this game. Melee attacks are more common in Chaos Gate, and it has attempted to improve the XCOM formula by adding a few additional features around the edges. If you like the RNG element of XCOM, you will see Chaos Gate as a downgrade. But many of you hate the RNG of XCOM, in which case you may find Chaos Gate less frustrating. For those of you who don't care about XCOM, let's get into the nitty gritty of controlling the Grey Knights. 
Generally speaking, you have four knights who have three action points per turn. You could use all three action points to move each knight really far in one go, but it's best to nudge them forward one action point at a time, sticking together behind cover until you trigger an engagement with the enemy. From there, you move from engagement to engagement, hoping not to trigger two at a time, until your target is dead, which may have been a particularly big and ugly vomiting monster, and you may need to hold back the horde while waiting for extraction. Each time you finish your turn, the zombie enemies have a turn themselves, and the bloom level rises. Whenever it hits 100%, your knights might get a debuff, or the enemy gets reinforcements, or receive a buff themselves. It just encourages you to finish the mission sooner, to make things easier for yourself. Unfortunately, this means rushing is almost always the right answer. There's some extra fluff around the edges, but at its core, that's it. So let's move on to the knights themselves and whether the game does the Warhammer IP justice. If you don't know Warhammer, here's a very brief explanation of why the Grey Knights are awesome. In Warhammer, there is an emperor. From his gene seed came the Primarchs, and from their gene seeds come your usual space marines, very powerful guys in their own right. But the Grey Knights are derived from the emperor himself. They aren't Primarchs, but they do have psychic abilities, and most importantly, a resistance to chaos, which is basically the biggest threat to mankind. I apologise to the 40k enthusiasts for that explanation, but that's about right. They're super duper, even for space marines, and are perfectly suited to fighting the Bloom, which is the work of the chaos god Nurgle. So now you know the Grey Knights make James Bonds look like Mary Poppins, let's explore the classes you get to play with. First up, the Justicar. A warrior that can charge through obstacles and enemies in his path, they can also boost the action points and willpower of an ally so that they can do more. Willpower, by the way, is what the Knights use to power their electrical psychic abilities. The Interceptor, my personal favourite, can teleport between locations to get behind the enemy and switch places with his brothers. The Purgator, a heavy ranged weapons specialist that can blind enemies and make your allies do more damage with their ranged attacks. And then we have the Apothecary, your typical medic. They'll heal you with their battlefield medicine abilities and generally buff your allies. None of these guys are weak though, each Grey Knight is powerful, it's just that some are ridiculously so. These four classes on their own give you plenty to sink your teeth into at first, but there comes a point in the game where you can requisition four other classes. These are the Paladin, whose combat abilities make him an absolute beast. The Chaplain buffs allies and removes debuffs through the power of prayer. The Librarian has the most powerful psychic abilities, and finally the Purifier incinerates enemies with a flamer and removes mutations, etc. These new four aren't necessarily better than the original Fantastic Four, they just add more choices to the mix. But is this a good Warhammer game? Warhammer fans appear content. The visuals paint an appropriate grim darkness to the future, albeit cartoony at times. You'll recognise some characters from the 40k universe, but most are new, and overall the characters and voice acting are solid. I don't want to ruin the story, but you don't just cleanse planets of a plague. Likeable characters are lost, unexpected and exciting characters are found, and the inevitable endgame boss battle is a satisfying way to spend two hours. However, if you are a passionate reader of the Black Library books, you may find the story lacklustre. The maps do lack variety, there's definitely a sense of here we go again after a while, and it's difficult to stomach a Grey Knight being downed by a lowly cultist from a lore perspective. But perhaps I just suck at the game. The current full price of the game is $45, £35 or €45, Euros. and what's surprising about this is, well, it's not the full whack $60 we're usually expected to pay for newly released games these days. For that price you get a decent amount of content and it feels suspiciously fair, but perhaps I'm just used to AAA game prices being ridiculous these days. The value gets even better if you can pick it up in the sale with 10% off. 
In terms of DLC, you can pay extra for the soundtrack if you want to. But then there's the Castellan Champion upgrade pack. You basically receive Castellan Garen Crow during the mid game, and he's pretty powerful at the time, but his level doesn't increase as you go. Most player reviews say they are disappointed by this DLC. You get this guy for half of your campaign, so think carefully before purchasing this. So let's round this all up and answer the question, is Chaos Gate Demon Hunters worth it for you today? The game is by no means perfect. If you're a big fan of Warhammer, you'll find problems with the setting and inaccuracies in the lore. If you've played XCOM for years, be careful as you'll soon notice issues with the pacing, enemy variety and general repetitiveness. But if you're a more casual player of the genre, or you just like a bit of Warhammer, everything about this game from the overall execution, the visuals, the characters, the story, are all decent. And even the price seems reasonable for the amount of content you're going to receive. So this decision really comes down to the following personal preferences. If you like this style of game, such as XCOM 2, Gears Tactics, or even Mechanicus, you'll find the game easy to pick up and play. Hardcore XCOM fans will probably not like it, but for the more casual XCOM player, the deciding factor will be how you feel about the lack of RNG. Grey Knights don't miss. They can either see the target or they can't, and damage may be limited by range. If you like the RNG in XCOM as it opens up and rewards certain tactical play, you might find it hard to stomach the lack of RNG in Chaos Gate, but I've spoken with many gamers who ultimately put XCOM down because of frustration with the RNG, so this game may well be for you. If you're a Warhammer fan, well, it's a decent entry for the IP, but there's no guarantee you'll enjoy this style of game. With that said, the game does well to ease you in and teach you the controls. It's just pretty damn hard on anything other than the easiest setting. The Holy Trinity is an XCOM gamer who doesn't like the RNG aspect and likes a bit of Warhammer. This game is an absolute no-brainer for you. If you found this video useful, I have plenty of others like it, so feel free to check out my previous videos, and maybe even subscribe for future ones. See ya.